we are nice high security and we believe in a world without limitations and in the high security market we think security doesn't have to be a burden on the people it's protecting a little bit about the history of our company high security goes back to the late 60s when it was founded our very first product the Hydra lift and swing risers were designed and built in the 1970s and we're still selling those very same products today. Apollo was um, founded in 1984. And then if you fast forward to 2016, NICE, which is a company headquartered in Italy, acquired high security. They previously acquired Apollo in 2008. And since then we've been acting as nice high security here in North America. And that will be our um, merger of capabilities has really brought us a lot of synergy and, and power when it comes to addressing global markets. We have customers that we serve in every category of product, in every vertical market that we serve, in, in the energy business, in aviation. We're in a lot of airports around the world. We protect a lot of government facilities. We do work with the Department of Transportation and other people in transportation and logistics. And we do a lot of work in corrections. We uh, think of ourselves as providing security so that people who attend these public events don't have to worry about it. So when you're sitting in a soccer game or whatever, football, uh, you don't have to worry about what might be going on around you. This is the uh, Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta. We have hydro lifts in here that control access to the loading docks at the stadium. We are a global organization. Uh, NICE headquarters is in Italy. The North American headquarters is near Seattle in Kent, Washington. And we have branches and facilities around the globe. NICE North America is um, three divisions. There's the door and screen division, which is headquartered in Canada. There's the smart home and alarm division, which is NICE abode. And then Daniel and I are with the gate and barrier division, and that's headquartered, as I said, in the Seattle area. In our factory here in Kent, Washington, um, we manufacture all of our gate operators in every product category. We also have an engineering department that does the R&D and the design work. Our sales and marketing is here, finance, procurement. Basically, most of the gate division operations happen out of our facility in Kent, Washington. We target four specific market channels. Residential is homeowners, single family residences. Commercial would be multifamily residences, community centers, apartment buildings, that kind of thing. Um, it also includes businesses and um, some industry. Our industrial segment is enterprise level customers. It also includes other core verticals like military and airport and things like that. And then the hostile video vehicle mitigation channel is specifically around defense at the perimeter against vehicle borne attack. Our industrial operators include a number of different solutions for slide gates, swing gates. We have barrier arms for traffic control. And as I mentioned, a vertical lift gate. Slide driver is our flagship product for slide gate operators. It is a system of operators, really. There's five main models and a number of um, options for every application and environment. This one here that you see is, um, I believe, it, at a prison. We're going to talk a lot more about the slide driver later in this presentation. This is the slide driver 200. This is our biggest machine. It's capable of moving gates as large as um, 20,000 pounds, a 10 ton gate. In addition to um, these capabilities, we offer UPS solutions. So if you need battery backup, we have battery backup solutions for every one of these models, including this one with the 20,000 pound gate. And we offer the ability to, to do uh, real-time monitoring with our HiNet gateway. 
This is the swing riser. It works differently than any other gate operator in the industry. It has a um, hydraulic cylinder mounted in the hinge post that lifts the gate directly up. And then as the gate is moving up, um, a cam follower turns in a path which causes the gate to turn. So the, the advantage of this beyond just being a very highly secure swing gate is it'll move very big gates and it's, um, it'll move gates up and over an obstacle. So it's often used to get up and over a curb or where there's a um, slope in the grade of the road. Um, sometimes it's even used in railway applications where you want the gate to be down low and you want to lift it up and over the rails of a train tracks. This is Hydraswing. You can see it's a um, hydraulic swing gate operator mounted to the post right here and it has a separate hydraulic power supply in the cabinet on the right side of the screen. This is our product for moving the biggest swing gates in the highest wind loads. I want to talk a little bit about our hostile vehicle mitigation solutions, our crash rated perimeter security solutions. Uh, we have the strong arm M30 and M50 which are our crash rated barrier arms. We have a couple of wedges. There's the Hydro Wedge SM50, which is an M50 rated road blocker wedge type. And then there's the Wedge Smart, which is a surface mount wedge plate. We also offer a system of fixed bollards. So this is the Strong Arm M30. In addition to being a crash rated hydraulic barrier arm, it has a unique second arm which is a, a patented feature, and we'll talk more about that, but that is there as a safety feature for accidental impacts. This product includes a, um, a photo eye for pr protection so that the gate doesn't close on an obstacle. And um, we also offer inter international certifications. So there is a um, European model with CE certification that's available. And one of the cool things about this product and all of our barrier arm products is uh, the arm pivots to a full 90 degrees when it's open. A lot of barrier arms will only go to um, 85 degrees or you know slightly less and the full 90 degree open makes sure that the uh, clear opening is clear for high clearance vehicles as well to protect the gate against vehicle strikes. This is the strong arm M50. It's in design, very similar to the Strongarm M30, uh, but we've beefed up the, um, the chassis and the catch post to handle a larger impact. This has a ASTM F2656 um, M50 rating, whereas the um, M30 obviously has the M30 rating. So this is a uh, much beefier, on, and 50 mile an hour truck has about four times the kinetic energy of the same truck going at 30 miles an hour. So it's, this is a formidable obstacle for security. It has many of the same features, the photo eye and so on. And for both of these, we also offer a manual um, operation version. So this is the slide driver and we're gonna spend most of the rest of this webinar talking about this product. And uh, Daniel, why don't you um, run over the specifics? I'm going to give you control of my screen here. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. So let's take a closer look here at the slide driver. As, as John has, has said, this is the, our, like the F-150 of high security here. We sell more of these than any other gate operators. This product, yeah, we've been manufacturing uh, back to the 70s and 80s and uh, really came to fruition after 2000 with the development of the new smart touch controller board. And we'll talk a little bit about that going forward. So as we look at this graphic here, starting at the top, uh, the gray box, uh, it says smart touch keypad and OLED display. That's the electronic, the electrical box there. And as I work my way around here, counterclockwise over to the left where it says electrical motor, that's sitting on top of what we call the pump pack. That's the hydraulic pump pack there. And as we work around, you can see that from the hydraulic pump pack, we have some hydraulic hoses and there are, they're moving over to the right, connected to these hydraulic motors. The way the slide, it's a slide gate and the slide driver is one that uses a rail. And so we have these hydraulic motors and on the front end of those motors, there are wheels and those wheels get clamped on the rail and we spin those wheels and that, that'll move the gate panel. 
Uh, as we work our way around here, we show a couple limit switches. Uh, that, that's for the open and close limits, right? And that motor that's sitting back, back on that pump pack there, that can be an AC or DC motor. We have different flavors of slide drivers. John had mentioned we have about five or six basic models. And then we have other models that depending on if it's a correctional facility or a UPS that has some battery backup. And then there's also one called the modular version where we'll remove everything in the, the, high, uh, the slide driver chassis here, except for those hydraulic motors and wheels, but the pump pack and the, uh, the electrical box are remoted in a separate cabinet. And uh, you might do that for noise considerations for uh, volatile gas areas. Uh, there, there's reasons you might wanna remote those pieces. Hey, there. Daniel. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit why, um, why somebody would choose a rail drive slide gate operator rather than some other, like a chain drive? Yeah, I think, John, the most important reason would be for security. It's harder to compromise or cut through that rail versus uh, putting in some uh, loppers and, and, and uh, cutting a chain. So I think that's pr the primary reason. You know, it also, because it's a hydraulically driven gate operator, it's very reliable as well. But I think the main reason is for security, John. All right, I'm gonna move forward here and change the slide. So, so the hydraulic components, as I've already mentioned on the, on the left here, we call that the pump pack. And it, it's pointing to the electric motor at the top there. And that's again, an AC or DC motor. If you choose the UPS version of the slide driver, uh, we, we send a separate cabinet and in that cabinet is a couple uh, charging components and, and some 110 amp hour batteries. And then we swap the motor uh, on this pump pack to a 24 DC motor. So now, now it's a 24 DC system, okay? Uh, and other components here on that pump pack, you can see the pressure gauge. Primarily we're looking at that when we do something called a pressure relief adjustment. Uh, the manifold is that, that aluminum block, if you will, or slab that sits in between the reservoir, the, the can, cylindrical looking can thing at the bottom, and it sits in between that and the AC or DC motor at the top. Breather cap, that's to breathe the hydraulic system. Uh, uh, when we ship it, there's a red plug in there and we do that so the hydraulic fluid doesn't leak out of it. And we, one of the first steps when you're installing this is to put it on the breather cap. It extends the life, life of the pump pack system, allows the uh, better on the seals and it allows it to breathe out any uh, uh, humidity. Uh, the reservoir that holds the hyd hydraulic flu fluid, obviously, and these where the hoses are. These hydraulic hoses that are running from what we call the the brake fold manifold here, because we have brake valves on this one. Not all of them do, but some most of them do. And uh, these hydraulic hoses that are running over the hydraulic motors, the little brass fittings at the top of them, we call quick disconnects because you just lift those up and the hose pops out of there. All right. Uh, recent, uh, the slide driver has been around for greater than 30 years. And initially we had a different type of keypad display on it. And in, in the past few years, we've upgraded that. This is a, a very vibrant and bright uh, two, two line, 16 character uh, OLED display. And it's got dual function buttons because in one mode, in operate mode, open, close, stop, uh, the bump, the uh, buttons will function in that mode. And if you're configuring this, you go into the menu and they'll function in a different mode. The wheels on the slide driver, the standard wheel is what we call the advanced drive wheel. So up to the, the slide driver model 15, 30 F, 40, 50 VF23, they're all gonna have on the both the upper and lower wheel, it'll be the, the advanced drive wheel. On the model 80 and 200, and when I, when I mention those model numbers, by the way, if you add two zeros to those model numbers, it'll tell you the maximum gate weight. So when I'm talking about a model 80 or 200, that's an 8,000 or 20,000 pound uh, gate operator. They come standard with what we call the extreme drive traction uh, system. So that's a cog wheel on the bottom and we, uh, we uh, attach a rack to the bottom of the rail. So it gives it more of a positive drive, if you will. So on the model 80 and 200, it's standard, but uh, we can retrofit any of the other models with the extreme drive wheel system. All right, now we're looking a little bit closer at that, uh, the electrical gray box at the top of the slide driver here. The main component in there is what we call the smart touch controller board. That's the main circuit board in there. You can see it's got a couple in user relays and those little screws on the left of it is where we connect to uh, different devices, whether that's, that can be box loop detectors or uh, access control, uh, peripheral devices, safety devices, uh, 
and external entrapment monitoring devices. So, so that's the main circuit board right there, we call the smart touch controller. That little ribbon cable is attached to the to the, the display keypad that I showed you on the previous slide that's sitting on top of the, the, the lid to the electrical box there. Moving to the left of that uh, start, uh, smart touch controller is the power supply board. And just to the left of that is the transformer. So we have uh, incoming power that goes into the transformer and gets stepped down to different voltages. And we, so we get 24 volts DC out of there. And coming into this power supply board, we, we bring in about 24 volts AC and we convert it to DC. And that's what drives our main circuit board, the smart touch controller. There's the motor contactor for uh, once where you're pressing an open and close and the motor spins, that's engaging the motor there. Power switches on the lower left there. And now here's a little closer view of the, what we call the pump pack. Uh, high security has been in the hydraulic gate operator since the 70s. We think we make the best pump pack out there. And in all our hydraulic uh, operators, you're gonna see a similar pump pack. It might have a different motor, it might have a different uh, gallons per minute flow rate, but it's basically the same pump pack. And as you look at this, I've already kind of go to, gone over this, but the, the, the stuff on the top is, uh, where it says the, the aluminum uh, manifold there, we call that the manifold or in head. Uh, that, that's where we have uh, valves plugged into it and different holes bored into it so it directs the flow of hydraulic fluid. Uh, we're showing an open valve and coil because there's what's called an, the open or directional valve and the coil activates it to, to switch the direction of hydraulic flow there. So a little graphic in the lower left shows the, the pump pack system and we've removed the, the reservoir, the, sil the, the can if you will. And if you look inside of that, we have, here's the intake tube at the bottom, at the bottom of that, there's a screen, so it filters out any uh, uh, debris or little particles, metal particles. We also put a magnet at the bottom of that can, so if there's any uh, magnetic type of metals, it'll adhere to that. By the way, that in head is made out of aluminum, and when we have that manufactured for us, we, we do have it clean, but, and, and then when we assemble a pump pack, we blow that out with air, but there's, there's a possibility that you could get a little sliver of uh, aluminum in there, so. Just, just to let you know that it, it would, it, it could get caught by that screen, wouldn't get caught by the magnet, but there's other ways that we can deal with that. All right. The little here, here's where you, the fill plug. That's where you fill the pump back there. In our hydraulic systems, we have less than a gallon of hydraulic fluid. Uh, most of them, it's probably about two thirds of a gallon. So if you did have a catastrophic leak, uh, well, it wouldn't be a catastrophic spill because less than a gallon, but it'd be a little bit messy. Uh, pressure relief valve and that's sitting right back here and right next to it is called the IES switch. IES stands for an inherent entrapment sensor. That's our safety device. Uh, back in March of 2000, uh, UL325 came out with some, some new guidelines and uh, one of them was that to manufacturers, would, uh, it would be important to have a built-in safety device and for high, uh, high security hydraulic aid operators, as well as our, our electromechanical, we use something called the inherent entrapment sensor. And in the case of the hydraulics, it, it will detect a, a spike in pressure. And so when it, when it detects that spike in pressure and it rises above what we've set for the pressure relief valve, it will stop the gate operator because we're assuming that either, it's, either the gate has hit something because the pressure is spiking up, so it's working harder, or maybe it's just hardware on the gate panel itself. Maybe a roller is hanging up. But in any case, we're going to stop that gate, and we want you to take a look at it. Okay, so that's the IES. Sitting right next to the IES is the pressure relief valve. That's how you set the maximum pressure uh, on the system. And when, when it exceeds that, that's what trips that IES switch right next to it. Okay, unloader valve and coil unloads the system load and, and sends it back to tank. And I think we've got everything there. And here, we're, we're, when we have uh, tech training here back in the factory, we actually have you build a pump pack. And we start with the one on the left called the basic uh, SS uh, pump pack. And you can see it, it, it doesn't, if you look to the left of that pump pack, it, you don't see any brake valves. And, and so this would be on a very basic, a slide driver 15, that's the pump pack. As we move up to different models of slide drivers, we'll add brakes on. Why do we add brakes? So we, we get soft stops, so we're not banging hardware. And then the other part of that is, uh, that's a soft stop. And if you want a soft start, then we use something called this thing on the right that we called an AWOG, accumulator without gas. 
and that cushions the initial surge of hydraulic fluid so you do get a soft start on this. If you're using something like our uh, Slide Driver 50 VF23, which has a variable speed drive that'll make it go two or three feet per second, with that, we, we don't have an AWOB because we, we can vary the speed, so we can uh, uh, have a soft start on that without requiring an AWOB. And we still have brake valves on that as well. But basically, you can take a, a basic pump pack and add components like brakes and, and AWOGs to, to accommodate the soft starts and stops on the gate operator. All right, we're shifting gears here. We're now look, taking a closer look at the strong arm M30, M50. Uh, John has already mentioned that we've crash tested this, the ASTM specification F2656. At the time that we tested it, we tested it back in 2011. And so the one that was in place at the time was the Dash 07 version, okay? And so we tested the M30, uh, M for a medium-sized truck at 30 miles an hour, and it penetrated that barrier once it struck the better barrier less than a meter. So that gave us a P1 rating. In the parentheses, you, you'll see the old uh, State Department and uh, Department of Defense ratings that they use K for kinetic energy and L for penetration. So uh, a barrier, uh, an M30 P1 is equivalent to a K4 L3 fuel. That's why we put that in parentheses. Okay. So, and, and then the, the, uh, our other product that came out a year later, the M50, real similar, but uh, if you look at the little graphic over here, the, 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 the one on the left where the traffic light is attached, so we call that the pivot or hinge post. On the other side of that, we call it the catch or receiver post. The receiver post on the M50 is a little bit beefier than, as you can see, compared to the M30. You have some gusseting on the, the M50's uh, chassis as well that's, that strengthens the chassis. Uh, I think John has mentioned that 20 miles an hour speed difference is four times the kinetic energy. And on that one, we, we did pass the, the test, but slightly greater than a meter, so we got a P2 rating on that. Other components it here. Was like 1.1 meters, right, Daniel? Oh yeah, just uh, <laughs> exactly, John. And uh, you know, with with some of these tests too, there there's some variance in there, and uh, the speed. I think we're at the upper end of that speed as well. So yeah, moving around. Uh, uh, high security is, is uh, it's ingrained in our culture. Safety. Okay, we 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 make very robust secure gate operators, but we also want them to be safe for security personnel working around them and anyone uh, crossing that barrier, right? So, so, and the same with the M30, M50, there's a standard on gate operators for swing gates, slide gates called the UL325, but in the world of crash products or uh, HVM, uh, hostile vehicle min mitigation, uh, UL325 doesn't apply because if we're getting a real terrorist threat, we're not so concerned about the terrorists at that point. We just want to stop that truck, right? And so that that's that's important to us that that uh, it, we don't need the HL325, and yet because we want it to be safe, we put on things like this this little white shield that we call the entrapment shield. There's a bumper shield here. Uh, we have bright LED lighting uh, on that upper arm. We have two two arms. John has mentioned that to you before, and the reason we have that lower arm is we were thinking that most of the strikes on this, on an M30 or M50, and really I think today, all the strikes on the M30 and M50 have always been accidental. I don't think we've had a real terror strike on, on any of these. And, and, and thinking it, it, we wanted to be uh, forgiving if it was an accidental strike and that imagine a, a passenger vehicle hitting this barrier and if it hit, if there was only the upper arm, it would slide under that upper arm and, and really shear off the top of that vehicle, probably causing serious injury. The way it's working now, do that lower arm, that stops that from happening. And we have a slide coming up that will show you how, how effective that works. And we've patented that design. So for safety, it works well. It also works well for security and that uh, you can't uh, get a car to nudge that uh, that barrier arm up because it's linked to that bottom arm. And so security wise and safety wise, it's a very uh, good solution. We do have an integrated and monitored photo eye for safety. Uh, again, that, that's just in case uh, you have a, a pedestrian crossing that barrier and we want that arm to stop on it, okay? Shallow mount, uh, there's two foundations for the M30, a six by six by two foot. So six by six square, two feet deep or a four by four by four. We also have a one foot uh, for, for certain environments that you can't go very far down to the ground. M50, it's, it's similar as six by six square, but uh, for, uh, two feet deeper, so six by six by four feet. Another huge thing uh, it, it, 
as well as that lower arm, we thought that was a real uh, key design element. And that one came at the, the 11th hour, as a matter of fact. And, and so did the self-contained controls and hydraulics. Initially, like many of our products, so whether it's a hydra swing or a, a swing riser, the controls, the controls being the electrical and the pump pack, we put in a separate cabinet. And a lot of times you'll hear this called that the hydra supply. So you're running hydraulic lines from that cabinet over to your gate operator. That was the original design on the M30 and M50, but then we thought maybe it'd make good sense to put it in the in the pivot post, uh, which simplify the install, right? You don't have to run the hydraulic lines over there. Uh, it keeps everything, uh, all, all the operating components are already above the ground, which, which is, is a good thing, especially for the maintenance folks. So that in itself simplified the install and fewer points of failure and fewer uh, hydraulic uh, leak points, if you will. So that really added to this as well. This comes in 12 to 24 foot clear openings. We, we don't call it a length of arm because John had already mentioned this. When we open that arm, it goes to a full 90 degrees. So if you have some vehicle that's moving through that opening, that what we call the clear opening, it's not going to clip any components of that, whether the pivot or the catch post. So six to eight second open close time, six seconds for the 12 foot clear opening, eight seconds for the 24 foot clear open. We shave a second off on an emergency fast close. Uh, rated 100 cycles per hour. And here's a nice shot of that lower arm. This one, I, I, this was in Oklahoma, I think. Uh, maybe John can correct me if I'm wrong, but it, it a federal building and someone was driving their vehicle. And I think they said it was around 40 miles per hour wasn't somehow wasn't paying attention struck the barrier and you can see there's very little damage to that upper arm you see some some niche but look at that lower arm it's it's really that's what really stopped the vehicle and, and kept it from going forward uh so that the the cab of the vehicle if you will or where, where the passenger was wasn't hitting that upper arm the person who was in this vehicle sustained uh, some some injury but but not much so Okay, so here we are, the, still going forward with the M30, M50. One of the slides here, if you look at that keypad there, that was the old keypad. We had a four character LCD display. You can see that now, but now again, like I've said previously, it's a two line, 16 character OLED display. Uh, very bright in full sunlight too, so it's easier to, to view. Uh, we don't use PLCs on, on that main circuit board, the Smart Touch controller, that's a microprocessor based uh, main circuit board which means we can change functionality things by, by changing the software in there. Uh, we did that to back in 2016 when we had to accommodate for our, for our slide gates and everything, the UL325 to monitor entrapment devices. So it was just a software change. A VFD drive inside the M30 M50 because we want to be able to vary the speed of that arm. And uh, I think John kind of hinted on this earlier. In that cylinder, it's a special cylinder because we have a, a, a sensor in there, uh, a positioning sensor. So we always know where that arm is at. And that, that talks directly to the, the Smart Touch controller board that's controlling the VFD drive so we can vary the speed of that arm. Integrates with our, our loop detectors. It's kind of hard to see because that's kind of a small graphic, but if you look at that smart touch controller board, you can see on the right side, you can see where the loop detectors, there's little white connectors there. You see free exit, inside loop, outside loop, center loop. Our latest iteration of our vehicle loop detectors is called the HY5B. Auto sensing uh, has uh, some cool technologies uh, like uh, uh, motorcycle mode and even auto gate compensation. So. Uh, uh, very robust loop detectors. Highly recommend them. So. Daniel, I'm a big fan of our HY5B. I think it's probably the most advanced um, vehicle detector in the industry. But what if you wanted to use somebody else's vehicle detector? No, oh, sure, John. Yeah, yeah. Yes. In certain situations, they might want to, whether, whether they're, they're more familiar with them or, or there's a certain application, but we can connect regular box detectors to our, uh, let me go back a, a oops, let me go back a slide just so I can show you a little bit. To our main circuit board, the Smart Touch controller. If you look at this graphic, it's a bit small, but that Smart Touch controller board on the left hand side, those are little terminal screws where you connect your your uh, the, the cables to different devices, and uh, we have four places for connecting loop detectors, similar to the to where we have our loop detectors on the right, the free exit, inside and outside obstruction loops, and also a center loop. Thanks for asking, John. But and I agree with you, John. HY5B is very robust, very good loop detectors. Highly recommend them. 
And previously on one of the slides, we talked about the, uh, when, when the M30, M50, when we uh, launched these products, uh, we, we were saying we could do 100 cycles per hour, which we thought was, was, was pretty good because in most of these places where, where it's a critical infrastructure key asset type of facility, uh, the security guards are inspecting your vehicles going in and out. And so, you know, we thought 100 an hour is pretty good. Then we had a customer come to us, I think it was one of our petrochemical company, companies and, and said, we'd like to do 150 to 200, is that possible? And, and yes, it, it was possible. It was all about cooling the hydraulics. And here we, we show you the, the pump pack on the, on the M30. Oh, actually it's an M50 because you can see the little gussets down here on the lower of the chassis. Uh, but it was about cooling the hydraulics. So the, the initial change was, upgrading the hydraulic hoses from quarter inch to three eighths inch. So, so that meant uh, lowered the PSI, less heat. And then we put a couple blowers on. So by doing that, now we can do the 150, 200 cycles per hour. It's a great photograph showing how the, um, oh. how the whole mechanism of this machine is installed above grade, right? Everything, there's no underground part of the machine like there are with other solutions. Yeah, John, like I said, these things have been, we started shipping the first one, I think, in 2011 on the M30, 2012. And, and if you talk to, we, we have a number of these, it's a, some pretty, uh, uh, our, a number of international airports here in the U.S. And uh, the maintenance crews love these because uh, the, there's nothing below the ground, like John says. And that pump pack is very reliable. Everything is well built, easy to work on. That's Even simple. high water, right? You know. Yes. Yes. Not, not that big of an issue because the water has to get fairly deep before it's going to hit something that's sensitive to it. Exactly, John. So, All right, and here's a, a quick overview here. Just uh, We're showing this because there's different crash rating standards. The one we use here in the U.S. is the ASTM F2656, and I think there's a Dash 15. There might even be a Dash 18 out there now, but uh, over the U.K., they use the pub public publicly available spec or the, the PAS 68, if you will. And then there's the international spec, the international workshop agreement. And one of the key differences between the US and, and the international and the UK is, 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 is metric versus US measurements, right? You know, so, you know, different, they use kilograms for trucks, right? And, and, and kilometers versus miles. And they also use different types of trucks. They're more of a bob nose truck. And, and so slightly different, they're pretty close. We have one product, the Hydro Wedge SM50. John mentioned that earlier. It was tested all three of these standards. So uh, it can go anywhere, right? You know, so it's, uh, I think going forward, maybe the international standard, the ISO will, will be the more dominant because if you crash to that, I think it's, uh, it, it works any place in the world for that. All right, and we're gonna end here. This is a high net gateway. This is a product that came out back in 2016. Uh, connectivity, right? If you want, need to connect your gate operator to a network, why would that be important? Well, if you did that, if you, uh, you know, it's kind of like the internet of things these days that uh, if it's connected to the internet, you can do a lot of wonderful things to it. Or if you're just connected to the local area network, you can do some uh, wonderful things, but it's all about connectivity, right? And, and so this is basically a 10, 100, 1000 gigabit switch. The thing on the right is called an SFP module. SFP stands for small form factor pluggable. It's a industry standard in networking that you have these little modules that you plug in there. And so you could take copper uh, or fiber optic and plug them directly into the switch. We only support the fiber optic because we felt we didn't need to do the copper because we have the four other copper ports on there. But, but if you have a uh, uh, fiber optic and there, there are some customers who have fiber optic running throughout their campus, if you will, and they plug it right into this. And now you have a very robust and with lots of bandwidth, not that you need that much bandwidth for gate operator, but it's a, it's a good secure connection. Uh, fiber optic is less prone to environmental things like lightning and, and also for if people are trying to hack into your network. Uh, so, so this puts your gate operator right on the wire and allows you to do like remote control and monitoring of your gate operator. If let's say you had a, a large campus, let's say something like a Microsoft or something, and, and, and for a local area network, you had a lot of openings, access control points in your perimeter, and you had our gate operators there with all, uh, all connected to the network, you could do a wonderful job of security management, plugging into those uh, uh, systems and, and monitoring your network. So I think we're the only one in the industry who can do this. And uh, so uh, we also have, uh, and, and part of the, the 
when you get the HiNet, it has an embedded web server that allows you to easily configure it. It's a graphical user interface. It allows you to control your gate operators to do remotes, opens and closes, and also get a lot of information from your gate operators because we can email or text you things that are happening on your gate operators, such as alerts, faults, and errors. And so that's huge. Imagine you have one of these on, your, on a customer that's a two hour drive and you're getting alerts, faults, and errors. You could, through the internet, get into that gate operator, see what's going on before you have to drive to that customer. And then uh, you'll, you'll, you'll have the parts with you or you already know what's going on with that operator. If you wanna customize it, we have a thing called the REST Services API. So you can customize it to do whatever you want to in your facility that makes sense for, for, for your gate operators, okay? So, and I think that's our last slide there. Thank you guys for paying attention. Yeah, thank you. It's been a pleasure to be with you today. And there's a lot more information at our website, highsecurity.com, where materials are also available at our support site, support.highsecurity.com. Encourage you to go there and to check it out. And thank you for your time today. We'll be seeing you. Take care, everyone. Thank you.